All right, we're going to keep talking about new projections. Um, today, we're going to be talking about um, some more uh, examples with more substituents on them, right, rather than just ethane or propane. Okay, and we're going to be learning some new terminology that helps us to talk about these molecules in a meaningful way. So first, let's look at the Newman projection for butane, right? And so, starting off, right, I like to draw this circle. You notice here, right? the bond that's in the plane, right, the CH3 group is pointing down, okay, and it's down in the plane. So we have to mirror that here, okay? And then you just fill out the rest of the new projection like so, right, remember this is CH3, get our hydrogens here, and then the back carbon is filled out like so, hydrogen here, hydrogen here, and of course we have the CH3 group pointing up right in the plane. So that looks like this. And again, even though the hydrogens aren't shown here wedged or dashed, they are assumed to be there, right, and in that spatial orientation, right? So we could fill it out like this just to show you that yes, indeed, they are here, right? But I don't have to show that in a line angle format. They're assumed to be there. Okay, so this is our new prediction of butane. Okay. You might already notice, right, the groups are a little different, right? With ethane and uh, propane, we only had um, two different types of interactions to worry about, like staggered or eclipsed. But now, right, with the CH3, there's going to be a different interaction if the CH3 is eclipsing a hydrogen or if it's eclipsing another CH3, right? Energetically, that would be different, of course, because CH3 is a much bigger group than just a hydrogen. All right, and so this is some of the new terminology we're going to be using to uh, illustrate that or describe it, right, to talk about it. So the different confirmations uh, we can have now, right, with more groups is something called totally eclipsed confirmation, right? And this just means the largest groups on a molecule that are eclipsed, okay, the largest groups, right, not just two of the smallest groups or a larger group and a smaller group, but the two largest groups on a molecule. Okay, and that will, are, that will always be pretty obvious, right, what the large groups are in a molecule. Um, you might also, just so you know, this can also be called a sin confirmation, right, where your book seems to use totally eclipsed, but just so you're not confused if you see this somewhere on the internet looking stuff up about uh, new projections, right, this can also be called sin confirmation. Anti-confirmation, right, is when the largest groups on a molecule are 100 degrees apart from one another. This is similar to staggered confirmation, but in this case, now the large groups are as far apart as possible, right? 180 degrees from one another. And the last confirmation, right, this is called a gauche confirmation, okay? I think gauche is a French term meaning uh, weird or sort of skewed, um, but that essentially means that the large groups on a molecule are only 60 degrees apart from one another. So this is still a staggered confirmation, but now the largest groups are close, but not totally eclipsing. So we have some examples of that down here. So the first one, right, this is just a normal eclipsed confirmation, okay? The CH3 groups are eclipsing hydrogens, but they're not eclipsing each other, right? So this is a normal eclipsed confirmation. The next example is totally eclipsed. Right, the two largest groups are right on top of each other, dihedral angle of zero degrees. The next example, as we can see, the CH3 groups or methyl groups are as far apart from each other as possible, right? So we have an anti-confirmation, right? They are 180 degrees apart from one another. And finally, we have the Gauche confirmation, right? The two large groups are 60 degrees apart from each other, so they are in a Gauche confirmation. You notice I haven't said staggered yet, right? Staggered is no longer a word we can use to describe these, right? Because the only two staggered confirmations we can have is with the CH3 group either right next to it, right? Because we, we can also have the CH3 group over here, right? If we rotate the CH3 group 120, it'll now be over here, but it'll still be in a gauge confirmation. The other staggered confirmation we can have, quote unquote, is when the CH3 groups are as far apart as possible, but we wouldn't say staggered here because we can describe this better with anti, okay? So there's no longer a normal quote-unquote staggered confirmation for butane. We can still have eclipsed, right, because it, this is when 
two groups are on top of each other, but it's not totally eclipsed, right? It is not the largest groups are on top of each other. So visualizing totally eclipsed confirmation again, right, like I have here. I want to sort of prove to you that there is um, more strain, right, on this molecule, there's more torsional strain. And we use that, or we describe that by something called steric strain, right? When two large groups come so close together that, that their electron clouds cause a strong repulsion. So if I was to draw out, right, the line angle structure for this molecule, for butane, in this conformation, right, you can see the CH3 groups are really close together. These hydrogens are basically hitting each other, right? So this molecule really doesn't like to be in the totally eclipsed conformation. It would rather be in any other conformation. So hopefully visually this makes sense, right? Why the totally eclipsed conformation is always bad. Because the largest groups coming so close together is always going to be basically hitting each other. And that's going to cause a strong repulsion, right? It's going to be much higher in energy. So of course, we can visualize this with a torsional energy diagram, right? So we have, again, going through the motions, right, rotating the molecule um, by 60 degrees, right, coming from right on top of each other and rotating it further and further across the energy diagram here. So looking at this, right, we have to remember what the different conformations are. So let's go through that really quickly. So this first one, right, the CH3 groups are 60 degrees apart from each other, so that is gauche. This next one is just eclipsed. This next one is anti. This next one is just eclipsed again. We have this next one is gauche again. And the final one is totally eclipsed. Okay? So energetically, what is this going to look like? Okay? So we know that anti has to be the lowest energy conformation, right? So we know this is going to be zero. So starting from gauche, that means that we have we're slightly higher in energy. Okay, from the zero. Where doesn't really matter, we're just concerned about the relative energy between these molecules. Okay. We go a bit higher energy with eclipsed, and then we drop all the way to the bottom, right? Zero relative energy with anti, because it's the most stable conformation. Back up to the same point with eclipsed, back up to a similar almost zero point with gauche, and then for total eclipse, we go all the way near the top. Right, to show that this is indeed the most unstable, the highest energy conformation. Right? Again, because of that steric strain between those two large groups, those two methyl groups. And importantly, note here that the gauche conformations are the same in energy, and the eclipse conformations are the same in energy. Okay? Gauche will always be lower than an eclipse conformation, right? The large groups are coming closer together. But it is still more unfavorable to have groups right on top of each other like this. Okay. So let's look at a couple more examples of some more um, semi-complicated uh, problems, right? More substituted problems. So for these two, draw the new projection viewed from the direction of the arrow. One pointing in the same direction we've been doing, right at the sort of left carbon here. Right, this carbon to this carbon, and then do another new rejection from this carbon to this carbon. Right now we're looking at it from the right. Okay, so do these, and we'll talk about it in class and look at a few more examples.